this is Aaron and Emily Thompson. You guys, uh, tell us a little bit about where you are right now, what city you're in, and what things are like. Yeah, so we are serving in a city called Iwatsuki, Japan. We arrived here about nine months ago um, and have been really heavily focused on language acquisition at this point. Um, Iwatsuki is about 30 to 45 minutes north of Tokyo. If you take train from our station into Tokyo, that's about how far it's, or how long it takes, just to give you an idea. Um, so we are kind of in lockdown with coronavirus. We can go out for shopping, but we're not really supposed to go go much beyond that and a lot of the shops close on weekends and busier times uh, so it's kind of been a little bit of a, a unique period for us um, the church that we're um, plugged in with here during our language acquisition phase uh, has senior missionaries and it's a little bit more of an established work and so they've done what everybody in the states has done and moved to online services yep. um, as well as online prayer meeting so very similar to what everybody in the states are doing right now um, and they do that, and then a time of fellowship afterwards, kind of a group chat thing that we use here called Line. It's popular in Asia. Um, and then in terms of day-to-day, -day, we're continuing our language acquisition. We do Skype with a, a, a tutor. In fact, Emily just finished a session mm -hmm. here about five minutes ago, um, and we're moving forward with that. And when the they finally raise the, the ban or the stay-at-home, uh, I'll be going to a language school about a 20 to 30-minute um, 20 to 30 minutes away in a city nearby. Um, and that's about uh, a two-year process. That's kind of where we're at. We are learning kind of what the city's like. We go around town with the kids and have met people, had opportunities um, to invite people to church, special, some special activities around Christmas time where several of the moms that Emily knows came out and received the gospel. So we've had opportunities for ministry even at this early stage. Wow. So. How about you, Emily? How have things changed uh, for you uh, in the lockdown? I think one of the biggest changes for me, um, and it's not something that I necessarily regret, it's just different. We don't have a car. Hmm. Um, so moving to a pedestrian lifestyle, we walk everywhere. Um, so I think grocery shopping has been one of the biggest changes for me. Um, we're really thankful where God placed us. We have two grocery stores, actually three very close by. I think it's about five minutes to walk to. Um, and just hauling the groceries back home has been different for me. Aaron helps me a lot with grocery shopping. Um, but some days he can't and I have to go. So I have to carry all the groceries home. So it, mm. it makes you think, do I really need that? I'm going to have to carry it home. And on more than one occasion, I bought a little too much and had to carry it home and regretted it halfway. Um, that's been probably one of the biggest changes. Um, uh, also, not being able to communicate with people the way I want to. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy building relationships. Um, I've learned how to use gestures very effectively to try to communicate um, what I'm trying to say. And then learning Japanese, taking Japanese lessons um, is really helpful in learning key phrases and in my vocabulary. So those two things are probably the, the biggest changes for me. Awesome. And and especially during the, the coronavirus stuff with the lockdown, do you find that you have, uh, uh, I mean, I know here in the U.S. we have, I feel like we have fewer opportunities to reach out to people. And it's, it's a little bit frustrating when you're trying to do ministry like that. I'm sure it's similar, especially when you have the language barriers. Is there anything you're doing uh, that you are doing differently, maybe? trying new things or, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? Is there anything you're doing like that that maybe you didn't expect to be doing that's kind of interesting to you? I am, I'm trying to keep up with the, there's two, two contexts that we have in the community um, that we're kind of focusing on um, that we've been able to invite to church and are trying to, one of them we've had over to our home. She's had us over to her home. Um, so I'm trying to keep up with her via uh, an app that we have. It's similar to, what would it be similar to? I don't know. It's an Asian app that connects people. Um, Facebook Messenger. Yeah, kind of like a Facebook Messenger. So I've been trying to keep up with both of them, occasionally sending them messages. How are you? Neither of them speak a lot of English, mm. and I don't speak a lot of Japanese. <clears throat> so we have to go, you know, we'll have to translate sometimes. Um, but we have tried to keep up that way. 
there's also a, a bakery down the road here. We're trying to connect with the, the baker, the lady who owns it, and her daughter. They really love Shiloh and Eliana. So we go down there. We try to go once a week and buy stuff from them just to keep up the relationship. And during the coronavirus, we have not been out as much. Um, but we still, like one, the other day I said to Aaron, you know, we do want to support a local business mm -hmm. they, because they it's hard for people like that during these times when people aren't shopping as much. So just trying to keep up that relationship and shopping when we don't even need it necessarily to try to keep up that relationship to hopefully one day we have the opportunity to show the gospel with her. Those are the things I think. Yeah, one of the things with pedestrian lifestyle, we frequent a lot of the shops routinely, mm -hmm. so people start to get to know us and build bridges that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so as we gain more language acquisition, they ask us why we're here, we have those opportunities to share with them. Being that you're in a, uh, I imagine you're in a city, you said you're north of Tokyo, about 45 minutes, it's probably still pretty much, pretty urban, right? Or Yeah, it's I mean, it's city, like building after building after building where we're at. So, and and do you find that there, because it's urban, there are a lot of international people? I've heard that Japan is typically not a place where a lot of outsiders live. So, do you stick out, or are there a lot of uh, people like you there? Um, when you get towards downtown Tokyo, there are more international people just because of business. But we're at there are very few international. Especially Caucasian Americans. I think maybe there's one other man in our city who's from America and he's married to a Japanese lady that we've seen. But other than that, yes, we do stand out, especially our kids. I don't think many people have seen like uh, Caucasian kids before. Hmm. And so whenever we have the kids, people will come up to us and engage, especially Emily. Me, I'm a little bit more intimidating because of my height and uh, being a man, but they'll engage Emily in conversation and gives her a chance to explain why we're here. Mm -hmm. and tell them about the church and then invite them out. So yeah, it does, especially in this area, it gives us a good opportunity to connect with people because they want to know why we're here and what we're doing. I would say almost every time I go out with the kids, somebody stops me and tries to engage me in some way, asking if the kids are mine, um, mm -hmm. asking me if uh, how old they are. And my favorite question is if they ask me if I'm married to a Japanese person, which always makes me chuckle because my kids don't look at all Japanese. But I've had that so kind. Are you married to a Japanese? Um, they're just trying to figure out why we're here. Because to them, it makes no sense why a family would come move to Iwatsuki. So. Very good. So how, how often are you able to go to the church? Do you, you stay mostly at home? Or are you able to still go in, uh, meet, you know, meet at all with people at the church or with the pastor yeah. at the church or anything like that? Uh, right now, the government has shut down any organization like that, so we're not supposed to meet. The government's asked us not to, so we don't go to the church right now. Uh, the missionary, senior missionary uh, goes there to record like the services, but he's the only one that goes there. The other members in the church don't go, but we keep up with them um, with uh, some of the apps, and mm -hmm. we see them around town, so we get a chance to talk with them. Uh, so right now, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a slower... Um, I guess, pace at that so, point. We don't go in and see everybody on a weekly basis, but we try to keep up. Awesome. What are some ways that we can pray for you as you navigate this and as you serve, um, you know, either it could be your family, it could be the people you're ministering to, it could be your church, it could be anything. Like, what are some things that we could pray for you about? Yeah, I think, like, um, just the transition here was a little... Was Pretty difficult, a little bit more difficult than we thought in terms of coming to a foreign culture with two little kids and trying to learn a language. So just energy and grace in all of that, discipling and ministering to our kids, uh, language acquisition, it's really difficult language, but super necessary to learn it in order to minister here. Uh, and then just adjusting, we're about nine months in, we're finally feeling like we're adjusting to the culture um, on a day-to-day -day basis. We have, okay, here's where we go to pay our bills and we don't feel little nervous about going and doing that, you know, something that we take for granted back in the States. So I think just prayer for grace and, and strength as everything is a little bit more difficult, uh, something that you kind of do in auto, autopilot mode in the U.S. takes a lot of energy and effort and brain power and willpower to get done here. Mm. At the end of some days, we get home and we're like, why are we so tired? <laughs> We've done, you know, just like a regular day, nothing dramatic. But we feel it's because so you have two children. That's part of the problem. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that is part of the 
<laughs> that is part of the problem. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll pray for your contacts for sure. In that regard, just pray. Um, so it's it's pretty easy to, to create like a, um, a mutual relationship, but then bridging that gap to the gospel right. takes a little bit more effort here just because people are so, it's not on their radar. So mm-hmm. just pray for that wisdom in, in bridging that gap. Very good. What Anything else that you think we ought out? Anything else that we can, um, any blessings in particular that you'd like to share? I think a huge spot. blessing. The Lord had a look. Um, plan things ahead for us. So our location, this wasn't where we were planning on ending up, but through some logistic things, we ended up here. Uh, and it was really of the Lord that he worked it out. Uh, it's a perfect location for where we needed to be. And then with the coronavirus hitting right about when they say, like, um, what do they call that? Uh, yeah, uh, culture shock. Sorry, when culture shock peaks uh, was kind of when the, the coronavirus was coming in. But my parents had planned to come and stay for a month, and um, they were able to actually do that, which was a huge blessing. Wow. So uh, they came for a month during that time where we were kind of on lockdown, gave the kids an avenue to get out, and so that was just of the Lord that it all worked out that, that way. They actually end up, their flight left, I, I want to say like three days before the country locked down, no more, you know, wow. restricting flight from America and all that. So it was just amazing how the Lord, they planned this months ago before right. we even knew the coronavirus existed. And they they were thinking of possibly canceling the trip just because of everything that was brewing, but they decided to come and we're so thankful. It was just an encouragement to us. The fellowship was a huge blessing and just kind of the boost that we needed. So we're wow. really thankful. That That's really neat to see how God did that. Tell us, I know some people are going to ask, and we'll end with this. Um, what is your living situation like? I mean, I know you've said some things in your, in your notes, but tell us a little bit about your apartment. Tell us a little bit about your, how, you know, your situation, how many bedrooms, how big, like, you know, tell us a little bit about that. So we have an idea, we can visualize, uh, where, how you're living. Um, so we live in like a, uh, 600 square foot apartment, um, on the second floor of a, of a like a eight story building, uh, right in about five minute walk from the train station. So kind of in the heart of uh, mm-hmm. an area where there's a lot of buildings. Um, and so I think the nearest green space is about a five to 10 minute walk for the kids. So we try to make that journey every day. Um, in terms of everything is pretty similar to what you'd find in a US apartment. We don't have an oven uh, in apartments here in Japan and we don't have dryers. So you hang up all your laundry. I think those would be the two, uh, biggest differences, no centralized heating and air conditioning. Uh, so that's a little, you experience the elements a little bit more than you would in the States. Um, but pretty modern country. So that has been an adjustment for us getting used to living in a smaller apartment with two kids. Um, and, especially with the coronavirus, we're not supposed to get out very much. We don't have a yard. Um, So trying to come up with ways to entertain kids in a very small space. And God has given us grace. And um, I think we're used to it by now. It's not a shock to live in a small apartment. Um, But it did take some adjusting to living in a smaller space. Well, let me pray. Yeah, let me pray for you. Yeah, let me close and pray for you. And then... uh... Uh, as we as we finish this off, Lord, we thank you so much for the Thompsons. Thank you for their love for you, and for their willingness to serve you overseas. I thank you for their um, endurance and their hard work. I pray you would give them special grace during this time, as it's got to be very challenging to handle these uh, difficulties of language learning with the little children and under this lockdown. I pray that you would give them opportunities to share the gospel and open doors to bridge that gap. In Jesus' name, Amen.